For most of us, the notion of amassing millions of dollars annually seems like a distant dream, let alone fathoming the idea of squandering such wealth to the point of financial ruin. The allure of opulence has proven irresistible to many celebrities, leading them down a perilous path of excessive spending on extravagant homes, luxurious automobiles, and an array of indulgences ranging from personal trainers and designer wardrobes to private chefs and beyond. As the allure of wealth and fame continues to entice countless individuals into its seductive embrace, the sobering reality of financial ruin looms ominously, serving as a cautionary tale for both celebrities and aspiring luminaries alike. Up first, we go to Siegfried and Roy's Las Vegas Jungle Palace. Time. The 80s Vegas style magician Siegfried and Royd lived in a singular estate known as a jungle palace, which was designed as an extension of their flamboyant stage personalities and filled with all sorts of weird and wonderful extras. So let's go ahead and take a look around. During the 1970s, German American duo Siegfried and Royd wowed audiences with their extravagant magic shows that often featured real white lions and tigers. They were the highest paid magicians Vegas has ever seen, and today, a statue of them stands outside the Mirage Hotel. So it's no wonder the dynamic duo snapped up a house down the road from the strip to ensure their commute to Vegas wasn't too long. Known as a jungle palace, this property was home to Siegfried and Roy for decades. They bought it in 1982 for an unknown sum, and following their deaths, Roy in 20 2020 and Siegfried in 2021, the estate was listed for sale for $3 million. With its circus-like interior, indoor jungle, and countless unique extras, the house instantly went viral. And now it has been bought by the owners of Cardin Circus International who plan to turn it into a tourist attraction. Built in 1954, the striking 8,800 square foot mansion no doubt looked a lot different when Siegfried and Roy first moved in. But following an extensive makeover, the property soon became a chocolate box of design details. Everywhere you look, you'll spot something else of interest, from the huge tent-like ceiling in the foyer to the various statues and ornaments that decorate every alcove and pillar. The two-story home features numerous lounges and sitting areas, as well as a two sprawling OTT bedrooms. One of the headboards was even decorated with a lion. As for design, you'll find the indoor palm trees, hexagonal floor tiles, mural covered ceilings, and shag pile carpets in various eye watering shades. There's also an indoor garden, a swimming pool, several water features, and even some animal enclosures where the duo no doubt kept big cats. There's even an incredible all black bathroom with stained glass windows and a bright red tub. The magicians lived here until 2003 after Roy was attacked by a lion and suffered a stroke. Following the incident, they moved to a 100 acre compound on the outskirts of Vegas, also known as Little Bavaria. The estate featured a mini zoo of exotic animals that roamed the grounds, and had two connected mansions and a water park. However, it was sold in 2021, and it is reported to be turned into a 300-unit apartment. We visit Evander Holyfield's Mega Mansion, former four-time heavyweight champion. Evander Holyfield appeared to epitomize his staggering $230 million fortune through the grandeur of his Georgia estate spanning an impressive 109 rooms, a 135-seat private theater, and sprawling across nearly 45,000 square feet, nestled within a sprawling 105-acre property. As detailed by the New York Times, the estate exuded an air of opulence befitting a boxing legend of Holyfield's stature. Among its lavish amenities, the estate boasted a horse barn with seven stalls, touted as one of the country's largest home swimming pools, a dedicated boxing gym, and even a private bowling alley, catering to Holyfield's every whim. Additionally, the compound featured a separate 4,000 square foot dwelling on site where one of Holyfield's former spouses resided, adding to the estate's allure and complexity. However, Holyfield's reign as the owner of Georgia's largest single family home was short lived. In a surprising turn of events, the property fell into foreclosure in 2013, ultimately selling for a fraction of its true value at 7.5 million, despite Holyfield's nearly two decade tenure as its inhabitant. TMZ reported that this sum merely covered half of Holyfield's outstanding debt to the bank, further compounded by over 200000 in delinquent taxes. The prestigious location, which served as the backdrop for several of Tyler Perry's films, a children's camp, and an annual 4th of July celebration featuring a barbecue and fireworks display, came at a steep price for Holyfield. He divulged that maintaining the property alone cost him a staggering $1 million annually with holiday light expenses soaring to $16,000 in a single year. In a remarkable twist of fate, the estate now rests in the hands of rapper Rick Ross, who has expanded the property's footprint by acquiring additional adjacent land, expanding its acreage to over 300 acres. 
Holyfield's once grand mansion now serves as a testament to the cyclical nature of wealth and the unpredictable fortunes that accompany it, serving as a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of material possessions in the ever-evolving landscape of celebrity culture. Up next, we go to Celine Dion's private water park in Florida. Not many mansions come equipped with a 500,000 gallon outdoor water park, but Celine Dion's Florida property is not your average celebrity home. Taking two years for Celine and her late husband to build, the super luxury home sits on five and a half acres of land and has access to over 400 feet of beach frontage. The My Heart Will Go On singer purchased the almost six acre estate which lies in Florida's exclusive Jupiter Island back in 2008 for around seven million dollars and commissioned the Bahamian inspired mansion. Designed by the singer for her friends and family, Dion's Lux Holiday Home offers all of the amenities of a plush private resort. It's split into two homes that share three pools along with an incredible water park featuring slides, a lazy river, and a footbridge. The Canadian star designed the 20,000 square foot property as somewhere she could retreat to and escape the paparazzi, yet it's anything but low key. There are a total of 13 bedrooms and 14 bathrooms, as well as countless gorgeous formal living spaces for hosting and relaxing. There's also a tennis court, a golf range simulator, and a beachside cabana with a massage room. The five bedroom main house is certainly worthy of a multi-millionaire songstress. The master bedroom has an extravagant walk-in wardrobe with automated clothing racks, plus a private wraparound terrace with its very own hot tub. And if that wasn't enough, there's also an eight bedroom guest house for visiting friends and family. This photo showcases the water park in all of its glory, the ultimate playground for children and big kids alike. The property highlights that when money isn't an object, you can have a house with almost any accessory. The breathtaking Bahamian inspired estate was sold by the megastar in 2017 for $28 million. Up next, we visit Kate Plus 8's mansion. Once upon a time, John and Kate Plus 8's held a prominent place in the hearts of TLC viewers, with its final premiere attracting nearly 10 million eager eyes, as reported by the New York Times. This remarkable viewership marked a zenith in the annals of TLC history, solidifying the show's status as a cultural phenomenon. However, as the adage goes, all good things must eventually draw to a close. During the pinnacle of their fame, John and Kate Gosselin reveled in a life of luxury, residing in a magnificent Pennsylvania mansion and indulging in lavish vacations to exotic locales like Hawaii. Their affluent lifestyle was made possible by the substantial compensation they received reportedly ranging from $25,000 to $50,000 per episode, according to The Balance, via The Sun. Yet the winds of change swept through their lives with the onset of a costly divorce and the eventual cancellation of the spin-off series, Kate Plus Date. Amidst the tumultuous aftermath of their separation, Kate found herself grappling with financial strain, culminating in the sale of her sprawling 6,400 square foot Pennsylvania abode in 2022. Despite an initial asking price, the property ultimately fetched $1.1 million, falling short by $250,000, as revealed by In Touch Weekly. Sources cited by The Sun shed light on Kate's financial struggles, attributing them to a prolonged absence from the workforce and a reluctance to pursue her former career as a nurse. The absence of a steady income, coupled with the exorbitant fees incurred from legal proceedings, served as significant contributors to Kate's financial woes. According to Celebrity Net Worth, her current net worth stands at approximately $500,000, a stark contrast to the substantial earnings amassed during her tenure on John and Kate Plus 8, which reportedly totaled $2.4 million. As Kate navigates the complexities of her financial landscape, her journey serves as a cautionary tale about the ephemeral nature of fame and fortune. Despite the glitz and glamour associated with celebrity status, the harsh realities of financial instability can swiftly erode even the most opulent lifestyles underscoring the importance of prudent financial management and foresight. Up next, we have Tommy Hilfiger's Fairytale Estate. American fashion designer and retail tycoon Tommy Hilfiger has owned a whole host of unusual properties over the years, including a minimalist waterfront estate in Miami. However, this European-inspired home in Greenwich, New York, is definitely his most impressive asset. The estate, which looks something out of a fairy tale, is definitely fit for fashion royalty. Hilfiger purchased the property, which was built in 1939, for a little over $31 million. The 22-acre estate provided plenty of bang for his buck and comes complete with a fountained rose garden, a boxwood knock garden, and a water garden with a koi pond, as well as a bean-shaped swimming pool and a tennis court. 
that's just the backyard. The property was originally called Chateau Paterno and was designed by architect Greenville Rickard for real estate magnate Charles V. Paterno. In the 1960s, entrepreneur, financer, and art collector Joseph Hirschhorn bought the estate and no doubt used the home's stunning walls to showcase his favorite art pieces. When Hilfiger moved in, he added his own stamp, delivering a painstaking reinvention of the historic property. Offering six bedrooms, suites, seven bathrooms, and three powder rooms, the home spans 13,500 square feet and boasts wooden beams, limestone floors, wall paneling, wainscoting, and more. Full of eccentric touches, the luxurious property has every amenity under the sun, including a games room, massage room, and a Turkish-inspired movie theater. There's also a wood panel dining room and a library with intricate ceiling moldings and a wine cellar. Every bit the fairy tower treat, the opulent master suite features two bathrooms, dual dressing rooms, and a private study, while the separate two-bedroom guest house is fully equipped with a living room and a kitchen. Perhaps looking to downsize, the designer listed this residence in September of 2020 for $47.5 million and reportedly sold it in November of the same year. Up next, we visit Mike Vick's Atlanta mansion. The early 2000s proved to be a turbulent time for former football quarterback Michael Vick, paralleling the distress inflicted upon the approximately 70 dogs discovered on his property in 2007, purportedly used for dogfighting. As Vick neared the conclusion of his two-year incarceration in 2009 for his involvement in funding this illicit enterprise, the specter of financial ruin loomed large. Amidst mounting debts, Vic's opulent gated estate nestled along the shores of a tranquil Atlanta lake faced foreclosure, as detailed by ESPN. For a brief span of two years, Vic had called the sprawling lakeside retreat home, imbuing it with personalized flourishes such as an indoor golf simulator, a bespoke bar, and a state-of-the-art workout room. However, as the gavel fell upon the auction block, these embellishments faded into obscurity, leaving behind only a subtle reminder of Vic's presence in the form of a carpet adorned with his iconic uniform number, seven. Despite the somber undertones of Vic's financial downfall, a glimmer of hope emerged from the shadows, offering a semblance of redemption to an otherwise bleak narrative. In 2011, an act of altruism unfolded as the animal rights group Dogs Deserve. Better step forward to acquire Vic's former Virginia estate, the infamous site where the heinous acts of dogfighting transpired, as reported by ABC News. The acquisition, facilitated at a cost of $600,000, was made possible through the generosity of donors who contributed a 30% down payment, underscoring a collective commitment to rectifying past wrongs. Transforming the erstwhile abode of cruelty into a beacon of compassion, Dogs Deserve Better embarked on a noble mission to repurpose the sprawling 13,000 square foot estate and its expansive five acre grounds. Through tireless fundraising efforts, the organization erected fencing and established a brick and mortar facility dedicated to the rehabilitation of dogs previously subjected to a life of confinement and neglect. While the main residents found new purpose as administrative offices, the surrounding land served as a sanctuary for these deserving animals offering them a second chance at a life filled with love and dignity. Up next, we go to Johnny Depp's French Village. Rather than following the well-trodden road of the LA mansion or New York penthouse, notorious Hollywood actor Johnny Depp decided to buy an entire village in the beautiful surroundings of the south of France. The 19th century hamlet was snapped up by the star in 2001 and boasts a main house and a guest house, as well as 300-year-old oaks, olive trees, and vineyards in the sprawling grounds. Known as Gassin, the celebrity village dates back to before the French Revolution and had been abandoned sometime during the 20th century. Depp restored the estate's 12 rustic stone and wood-beamed buildings, including its quaint chapel, and ended up splashing a reported $10 million on the revamp, in addition to the 4,300 square foot main house, and now also has six guest houses bringing in the total number of bedrooms to 15, along with heaps of wonderfully quirky amenities. The two main living spaces total a comfortable 13,000 square feet, while elsewhere there is also a wagon with a bath and kitchen, two swimming pools, a skate park, a full gym, and the Pirates of the Caribbean themed wine cellar. The grounds also feature a converted church, which has been transformed by the actor into a stunning guest home, with rustic stonework and soaring ceilings. An escape from reality, the village even boasts a pretty town square with a private restaurant and a number of idyllic outside areas for the star to sit back and relax in sunny Saint-Tropez. The estate even has its very own art studio, which is covered in paintings and materials 
It sounds like the perfect celebrity worthy holiday home for anyone looking to lay low in their own town. Despite being one of the most unusual homes we've seen, Depp has put the village on the market three times. It was first listed in 2015 and 2016, and in May of 2022, it was back on the market for a reported $65 million. Up next, we visit Burt Reynolds' mansion. Prior to his passing in 2018 at the age of 82, the renowned actor, producer, and director Burt Reynolds found himself mired in a series of financial challenges. Just a mere seven years preceding his demise, Reynolds' financial woes came to the forefront when Merrill Lynch asserted that he had defaulted on payments for his sprawling Florida estate in Hobe Sound, a property he had acquired in 1980 alongside his then-wife actress Lonnie Anderson. According to legal documents obtained by the South Florida Sun Sentinel, Reynolds found himself indebted to Merrill Lynch to the tune of $1.3 million. Nestled upon four acres of lush land, the Mediterranean-style abode boasted a plethora of luxurious amenities, including a refreshing swimming pool, a state-of-the-art cinema, a private boat dock, and even its own secluded beach and exclusive hair salon. Despite the opulence of his estate, Reynolds faced a stark reality when he attempted to sell the property in 2009, listing it for a staggering $9 million, only to be met with disappointment as prospective buyers failed to materialize. However, the foreclosure of his Florida home was just one facet of Reynolds' financial turmoil in the twilight years of his life. Following a tumultuous divorce from Anderson in 1996, Reynolds found himself grappling with bankruptcy, exacerbated by ill-fated investments in a local restaurant group. Additionally, legal battles loomed large on the horizon, including a lawsuit filed by his former girlfriend, which was eventually settled out of court. Furthermore, Reynolds' financial woes extended beyond the confines of his personal life, as he found himself embroiled in a dispute with the state of California, owing a hefty sum of $235,000 in unpaid taxes dating back to the time of his bankruptcy filing. As the specter of financial instability cast a shadow over his illustrious career, Reynolds confronted the harsh realities of fiscal misfortune, a stark reminder of the fragility of fame and fortune in the ever-changing landscape of the entertainment industry. Building. Up next, we go to Zsa Zsa Gabor's house. Long before the Kardashians were on the scene, Zsa Zsa Gabor was the OG American socialite. The late Hollywood icon immigrated from Hungary to the United States in 1941 and went on to become a Hollywood actor, starring in various TV shows and movies. Gabar bought a seriously cool home in Palm Springs, California. The mid-century modern home actually belonged to Zsa Zsa's famous sister, Magda I. The two lived in the property separately over a 30-year period, making it a true piece of Hollywood history. Dating back to 1964, the 3,500 square foot bungalow no doubt played a host to countless celebrity parties over the years and its interior and glistening garden would have been the perfect backdrop for VIPs. Positioned in the high-end neighborhood of Little Tuscany, the three-bedroom house features 360 degree views of surrounding mountains, but the view is perhaps the least interesting thing about the place. Every single room is decked out with unusual design details, including mirrored walls, vintage furniture, shag pile rugs, stone floors, and over-the-top light fixtures. There's a living and dining room equipped with a grand piano and a seriously distinctive kitchen, fitted with black units and shimmering gold ceiling. A nearby family and breakfast room offers more views and leads out to the patio, where there's a fire pit, swimming pool, and desert-inspired garden. There are three bedrooms, but the primary suite definitely wins the prize for being the loudest. It includes a dressing area, a makeup room, lounge, and an office, as well as a private bathroom with dual vanities and a large gold soaking tub that sits in front of the floor-to-ceiling window. If you've fallen in love with this wild and weird home, then it's currently for sale for $3.5 million. Up next, we visit Warren Sapp's mansion. Former NFL defensive tackle Warren Sapp, renowned for his stints with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Oakland Raiders, once amassed a staggering $77 million from his illustrious football career. However, despite his substantial earnings, Sapp found himself ensnared in the throes of financial turmoil culminating in a devastating bankruptcy filing in 2012, as reported by Yahoo. Shockingly, the bankruptcy documents revealed that Sapp was left with a mere $1,000 in assets, juxtaposed against an overwhelming debt load approaching nearly $7 million. In a bid to alleviate his financial woes, Sapp was forced to part ways with his opulent 10,000-square-foot Mediterranean-style mansion nestled in the affluent enclave of Windermere, Florida. The grandeur of this estate replete with lavish amenities including a captivating pool, complete with water slide and lazy river, 
four palatial bedrooms, and six sumptuous bathrooms belied its eventual fate. Despite fetching a seemingly respectable sum of $2.9 million at auction, it paled in comparison to its previous valuation of over $7 million. Yet, the loss of his cherished abode was just the tip of the iceberg for Sapp as he grappled with the heartbreaking reality of relinquishing numerous possessions in a desperate attempt to satisfy his creditors. Among the items offered up for auction were more than 200 pairs of coveted Nike sneakers and a prized boxing glove autographed by the legendary Muhammad Ali, underscoring the extent of Sapp's financial distress. The lavish details adorning Sapp's former estate painted a picture of unparalleled luxury. As noted by Realtor.com, dot from hand-painted gold leaf crown moldings to exquisite Venetian plaster finishes, the residence exuded an air of celebrity-worthy sophistication. Marble accents adorned every corner, while the presence of a wine cellar, home gym, and home theater further enhanced its allure. Outside, the estate boasted an outdoor kitchen perfect for entertaining, alongside breathtaking vistas of Lake Butler and a private dock, complete with jet ski lifts and a boat lift. The tale of Warren Sapp's financial downfall serves as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of wealth and the inherent risks that accompany a life lived in the spotlight. Despite the ostentatious trappings of success, the specter of financial ruin looms ever-present, a sobering reality check for celebrities and common folk alike. Up next, we go to Beyonce and Jay-Z's New Orleans Church. A far cry from their ultra-modern mega-mansion in Los Angeles, Beyonce and Jay-Z are rumored to have made a rather unusual purchase in 2015. It's reported that the pair may have snapped up a converted church in the Garden District of New Orleans for a reported $2.6 million. Whispers of the supposed purchase began when a company linked to Beyonce's management was revealed to have signed on the dotted line. While the Carter's ownership of the property is still somewhat in question, the space's grandeur certainly isn't. The 13,000 square foot home was once a church and has immense curb appeal and certainly showcases all the hallmarks of a VIP residence. Inside, the property is spacious and bright thanks to the towering 26 foot tall ceilings and vast windows. The seven bedroom, eight bathroom property was originally built in 1925 and boasts an incredible living green roof. While these photographs show how the place looked when the VIP couple apparently bought it, we're sure they made plenty of changes since receiving the keys. Spread over three floors, the converted church blends modern touches with plenty of period features, including hardwood floors, marble accents, original columns, and attractive plaster work. A dramatic staircase sits at the center of the living room, which is zoned into a lounge, kitchen, and dining area. The home also provides a loft-style sitting room and a library nook with a floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. The perfect spot for the Queen of Pop to unwind after a long day. The master suite is classically styled and comes with a large walk-in closet, as well as a generous-sized bathroom with a wooden vanity, a large antique bathtub, and a separate shower. With Beyonce's younger sister, Solange, having relocated to New Orleans in 2013, the former church, which is just off the main Mardi Gras parade route, would make the ideal base for family reunions. Up next, we go to Pierce Brosnan's $100 million Malibu estate. In October of 2020, we got a sneak peek inside Pierce Brosnan's epic estate when he put it on the market for a staggering $100 million. The unusual Thai-inspired home, which is actually in Malibu, California, was built by the James Bond actor and his wife after Brosnan purchased two lots of land in the early 2000s. Hidden behind carved teak entry gates, Orchid House sits under a green clay-tiled roof. With almost 13,000 square feet of living space across the estate, the main house has been built in a U-shape and features a light-filled open floor plan, fitted out with wide plank teak floorboards, scissor truss ceilings, and floor-to-ceiling windows. The combination living and dining room spills out onto the tropical landscaped grounds. Offering five bedrooms and 14 bathrooms, the home was ideal for entertaining. In the main house, the master bedroom sits on an upper floor and boasts two fireplaces, two bathrooms, and two dressing rooms, full of world-class amenities. The property also has a movie room, a gym, a recording studio, and a spa, complete with saunas, a steam room, a plunge pool, and a Japanese soaking tub. In addition to the main house, the ground also has a two-story pool house, complete with a bar and a seating area. The perfect spot to kick back and relax. Despite its scale and beauty, Brosnan's home proved unsellable after 12 months on the market with no bites. He has now removed the pad from the market. Up next, we go to Mr. Chow's opulent mansion. The ultimate in luxury and out there interiors, this LA home of actor and restaurant entrepreneur Michael Chow was modeled on the Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid and is full of opulent period finishes flown in from around the world. This includes imported carved and wooden doors from the Spanish monastery, 16th and 17th century Florentine ceilings, and 400 
100-year-old Morris Columns. The property was built by Mr. Chow and his now ex-wife in 2005 and lies in the Hombly Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. The couple spent seven years building the home from scratch, according to the Wall Street Journal. As well as being their full-time home, the property was built as a dedicated space for Chow to display his world-class art collection. And its soaring ceilings and seemingly endless walls certainly are a perfect fit for that. The mesmerizing 30,000 square foot mansion features colossal rooms, including this remarkable lounge. With its double height ceiling, exposed beams, and endless windows that allow sunlight to filter inside, it's the perfect place for hanging a painting or two. Inspired by Art Deco aesthetics, this incredible library boasts walls lined with exotic slabs of polished hardwood and features a huge tapestry that takes center stage. Even the furnishings are like pieces of art. Elsewhere, the seven bedrooms and a vast formal dining room that accommodate the largest of A-list dinner parties. The lavish home also benefits from an amazing underground home theater that can accommodate up to 40 guests. The cinema even features a dining table so that you can chow down while you watch the latest blockbuster. Outside, the grounds feature palm trees and manicured lawns so you can soak up the sunset. Chow listed the place in late 2019 for $70 million and it became Realtor's most expensive new listing. Up next, we go to Gwen Stefani's Mod Mansion in Beverly Hills. A strikingly unique mega mansion, if there ever was one, Gwen Stefani's 12,000 square foot home in Beverly Hills is pretty much bang on what you'd expect from the trend-setting fashion icon, who has her very own massively successful clothing line. The pop star snapped up the seven bedroom, 10 bathroom pad, together with her rocker ex-husband, Gavin Rostow, in 2006. The pair paid $13.5 million and, and then set about giving it a thorough makeover. Full of electric design throughout the 12,000 square foot home is playful and entirely one of a kind. Almost every room boasts a cool and contemporary monochrome aesthetic, thanks to rich slabs of marble, black and white geometric patterned floors, loud wallpapers, and rugs. The quirky decor strongly reflects Stefani's personal style. The usual interiors nod to the 1960s and 70s and 80s, and have a fun pop art feel. Even the kitchen is black and white with striped wallpaper and black marble island. Look too long and it might just make your eyes hurt. The master bedroom is just as on point as the rest of the property with a spectacular chandelier and a fireplace. Other highlights include a spacious home, theater, and gym. Other highlights include a spacious home theater and a gym. Not to mention the infinity pool, spa area, playground, and tennis court. After Stefani and Rostell separated in 2016, they went on to the list the house for $35 million before finally selling it for $21.6 million. Up next, we have Robert Downey Jr.'s Windmill Cottage. Why live in a regular mansion when you can live in a windmill? Or at least that's probably what Robert Downey Jr. was thinking when he purchased this wonderful windmill, originally built as a playhouse in the wealthy town of East Hampton, New York. Though we don't know how much he paid for the place, we know it was on the market for $11.9 million before he snapped it up back in 2017. The incredible property was constructed back in 1885 and has lots of beautiful original features throughout. Located in one of the most sought after but exclusive pockets of New York State, the property would have been the perfect family home for the superhero actor. Measuring over 8,500 square feet, the historic home offers lots of space for the family to enjoy, and the decor is traditional but chic, with plaid carpets and lots of antique wooden furniture befitting the history of the house. This beautiful living room captures the heritage charm of the property, from the original beam ceilings to the open fireplaces. There's a lovely family kitchen, a 50-foot swimming pool, an outdoor living room, and a bar as well as an alfresco dining table and a huge cinema-style TV screen. Some extra amenities include a three-car garage, a putting green, and a tennis court. The four-acre garden also offers a two-bedroom guest house, that's perfect for visiting. However, the converted house does look a little bit different now after the couple invested a fair amount of money into renovations. Up next, we go to Pharrell's extravagant Beverly Hills Glass Mansion. Sitting at the top of a private bluff in the Beverly Hills post office area of Los Angeles lies a magnificent all glass property that was once home to a singer, songwriter, and fashion designer, Pharrell Williams. Unlike anything you might've seen before, the mega mansion exudes luxury. Pharrell bought the property in 2018 from movie mogul, Tyler Perry. He paid a cool $15.6 million for the sprawling property, which enjoys a prominent hilltop position on Mahalan Drive. The house sits on over four manicured acres of land, and Pharrell used his time as the owner to completely transform the home's interior spaces. Sitting at the end of a 200-foot driveway, the impressive home has more than 17,000 square feet of accommodation, and with 10 bedrooms and 11 bathrooms, it isn't short on space. The expansive living room features polished marble floors, towering walls of glass, and multi-level ceiling, while outside on the balcony sits a small bar area, the perfect spot to take in those jaw-dropping views. The unconventionally shaped dining room, which could easily be mistaken for a corporate meeting space, features a huge chandelier crafted from chunks of raw crystal, 
However, if relaxed dining is more your thing, there's a less formal eating space in the kitchen. Plus, many more of the rooms feature wood accented built-ins, dramatic light fixtures, and polished marble floors, as well as direct access to the home's abundant outdoor decks. Outside, the incredible backyard is just as luxurious as the main house. The sunken kitchen and bar area is flanked by a terrace, which sits atop the five-car garage. Deeper into the grounds, waterfalls pour into several swimming pools and small lagoons, where you'll find a slide and a spa grotto. Pharrell waved goodbye to the pad at the start of 2020, eventually selling it for 14 up next, we go to Cara Delevingne's Los Angeles home. Described as her adult playhouse, Cara Delevingne gave the world a glimpse inside her wacky Los Angeles home during an all-access areas tour with Architectural Digest. According to reports, the famous supermodel snapped up this Studio City home in 2019 for $7 million, and she opened up the Mad Hatter-inspired property to the cameras in the summer of 2021. Following an extensive renovation, far from being ordinary, the house is overflowing with quirky design elements. The house has an English style facade and was built in 1941. However, with help from the architect Niccolo Bini, Delavine has completely overhauled the property and it's now bursting with colors, patterns, and statement pieces. For starters, the once traditional facade has been given a lick of vibrant blue paint while two grand lion statues sit at either side of the double front door, giving us a taste of what lies inside. Electric and playful, the model's home blends traditional elements such as coffered timber ceilings, hardwood floors, and tiled fireplaces with modern touches like Gucci wallpaper and James. Torrell art pieces. The living room features mix and match furnishings and a transparent piano, while one of the bathrooms is a shrine to David Bowie. It's decked out with gold mosaic tiles, including a guitar signed by the late rock legend himself. But this is all fairly normal considering what else the house harbors. Jam packed full of fun, the home has numerous quirky bars, a screening room, a games room with a poker table, a costume room filled with fancy dress outfits a few in-ground trampolines, and even a ball pit. Delavine told Architectural Digest that her work requires her to wear many different hats and costumes, so her whimsical home reflects lots of her themes and moods. If I'm having a bad day, I'll just hop in the ball pit, she said. You can't really cry in the ball pit, yet the home's most surprising feature is yet to come. That's right, Delavine requested a secret passageway, and Niccolo Bini certainly delivered. While on one side of the tunnel sits behind a mirror in the living room, the other end is a door of a fake washing machine. Here, Delavine can be seen showing the camera crew the nifty little space. There's also an attic party bunker, which includes a mirrored ceiling, tassel swing, and dancing pole. All right, everyone, I think that's gonna wrap this video up. Like I mentioned in the beginning, follow all my social media, and also 50% of the people who watch me don't subscribe. So just, if you're watching, just click the subscribe button. It's free, it means a lot. And then an alternative option would be to become a member, which costs a couple dollars, but then, you know, I'll be calling you guys, FaceTiming you guys. You get cool badges, you get exclusive videos. Um, I'll be making videos that I can't show, like public channel. So you guys get a ton of cool features and by clicking here and becoming a member. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you guys. Thank you for the constant support. Feel free to share this video on anything and I'll see you in the next video. Later.